great to have you here. If you were here for the fall, you might have noticed that we actually have our lobby back, so we're so excited about that. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Hilton Head Prep's production of Tuck Everlasting. It is my pleasure to be able to do this show with a special group of students. I couldn't have asked for a better cast. And now I have a rocking crew too, so I couldn't have asked for a better crew. And um, I have a, an amazing music director, Mrs. Lauren Stewart. <laughs> we have Mr. Mike Crow running sound. <laughs> and one of our student crew, Nate Abrams, running the light board. <laughs> and my man, Jimmy, on spot. We have one more, second to last show. We have one more tomorrow, so make sure you tell everybody, because we need to fill this house. I'm gonna graduate six of these seniors tomorrow, and it's gonna be a very special, special show. The, this tree and this silo that you're about to see were built by Mr. Jeff Mullet. And the artistic elements were done by my dear friend, Sylvia Culpepper. She came in late at night and painted, painted a bunch of things and you'll see they're amazing. Anything else that you look at that you think might be a little sketchy that was painted by me, so it's not, and she didn't do it. And the facades of the houses were done by Mr. Shane Thurston. So we're so happy. If you were out in the lobby, there's amazing concessions from our Hilton Head Prep Art Guild, so make sure at intermission you go out and get some cotton candy and caramel corn and place a bid on a, a Broadway poster. It was an opening night Tech Everlasting poster signed by the original cast and creative team. So in my mind, it's priceless. So go on out there and put some bids on that. And while we're here, we live in this, in this theater of very sketchy Wi-Fi that we are depending on. So please place your phones on airplane mode and for that matter, just turn them off, get rid of them. If you're sitting there and your face is glowing, we see your glowing faces. Okay, we don't wanna see those. And while we're talking about faces, if you wear a mask to keep everybody comfortable in the audience and you will keep our cast nice and safe so that they don't have to wear masks to perform. All right? All right. So welcome to Talk Everlasting.
can you open your eyes? No! Surprise! I don't understand. I can't wear black to the fair. The fair? It's coming to town tonight. Can't we bend the rules just once? Surprise! You're late, Nana. Oh. Did you say yes? I'm sorry, you two, but no. It has not been a year since your father's funeral, and we can't go on acting as if nothing has happened. But nothing does happen. Not anymore. Winnie, please march upstairs and put your proper attire back on. Oh, Betsy! I told you she would never let us have fun. We have fun every day. Keep your potato feeling, Betsy. We want cotton candy. Her father would have taken me to the fair. I know, but... Things are different now, and if you can't be a good girl for me, at least try to be a good girl for him. Yes, Mother.
guess a girl's age just by looking into her eyes. For instance, your sister here is probably 80. Ageless. Ageless indeed. Well, this book of a schoolgirl. I still feel like one. Why, I'd live forever if I could. We have something in common. I would do anything to live forever, and I do mean anything. Would you? Well, would you? It was just an expression. To you, perhaps. Now, I don't suppose you've noticed anyone strange around here recently? What do you mean, strange? Been up and down the state, looking for a highly unusual family. You used to live here in Tree Gap Wood some time ago? I don't recall meeting anyone unusual until today. Pardon me, but is there something I can help you with? <laughs> no, pardon me. Just spreading the word about the fair. Is it as fun as it used to be? Madam, nothing is as fun as it used to be. You can say that again. Nothing is as fun as it used to be. <laughs> that tune! Do you hear it? I've heard that very melody on and off my whole life. It's beautiful, and it always comes from our wood. Your wood, did you say? Yes, she did. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. For now, ladies, as much as I love to stay, a woman only has so much time. Where do you find a suit of that color? And why would you buy it? <laughs> Don't you see, Mother? It's a sign! We can go to the fair like we used to! No! And that's the final word. But, Mother! No more buts! The world can be a dangerous place, Winifred. And it is my job, alone, to protect you. From what? Having fun? That is enough! Now go inside and change your dress and your attitude. No! I hate you! And I hate your rules! Winnie! Betsy, let her be. She'll come in when she's ready to apologize. Toad, you're back! Why should I apologize? I don't want to just be good. I want to be daring. I wish I could go with you. The cage for a yard can only open when the front door shuts. Should a gate open? If I don't leave now, I'll only wish I had Cause I know good without trying bad To think I'd never see my wood I've gotta get out While the getting's good Toad, wait for me! Foster, and you don't even know what you got. Come with me. Where are we going? Up. Up? Right now? There's no use running away if you don't make it an adventure. Good point. I just hope you're not afraid of heights. Only one way to find out. Watch my every step. Find a sturdy branch. If you dare look down. Pull your body up. Dig in your heels. Let's see what this tree reveals. Just a few more feet. 
you're almost at the top, watch the robin's nest. Pull your body up till you broke it through. Let's see if this tree has a view. At the top, at the top, at the top of the world, you're drawing back those curtains. At the top, at the top, at the top of the world, there you go for certain. You're alive and you are free, so follow me to the top of the world. Everything looks so different up here. You ain't seen half of it. Don't you ever get afraid? If you aren't afraid, you aren't alive. Mountains to the west, an ocean to the east, a storm cloud to the north, ready to pour every sycamore. Leaves me wanting more and more. At the top, at the top, at the top of the world, my head and heart are pounding. At the top, at the top, at the top of the world, I hear my voice resounding. I'm alive. Are you trying to get us caught out here? <laughs> you know me, Miles. Nervous habit, I know. Hey, can I have a proper hello here? Great to see you, Ma. You're as pretty as ever. And you don't look a day over 105. Funny. Sometimes I actually pray I'll wake up with gray hair and a pot belly. Speaking of your father, he's back at the cabin getting everything ready for your visit. Come on, he always comes to meet us. He isn't quite himself these days, but he'll snap back to life when he sees his boys. And Jesse's running late, I assume? It's been ten years since we've all been together, Miles. Another ten minutes won't kill us. You got that right. Mom! Oh! Jesse! There's my sweet boy, the one who still hugs me. Listen, I have something I have to tell. Tell us at the cabin. You know this isn't a safe place to linger. Always great to be reunited, Miles. I see you're still playing in trees. I see you still can't take a joke. Boys! <laughs> Jesse, you were telling me something? Right, so hear me out. You know how you always say good things come in small packages? Well... Hello! Not yet! We climbed a tree! I fell on top of my house! It was great! She followed me here. Can we keep her? Uh, child... <laughs> I always knew this day would come, that someone would discover us, but a child? I thought you said they'd like me. She's not just a child, she's also my friend. Jesse, oh. please tell me your friend doesn't know anything about the... You know. Water? Oh boy. Jesse! You told her about the water. This isn't my fault. It never is! Ma, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Unfortunately, yes. Please know that as a mother, I don't approve of what we're about to do. <laughs> Let's get back to the town and follow her what to do. Winnie, are you okay? She can scream, she can scream. Don't worry, Winnie, you look for everything at home. Big day, first case, girls gone, no trace, small town, no crime, 
Now she yaps hit the big time. What's this? Fresh tracks. Who's there? Red lights. Footprints. Size nine. A clue. Yahoo! Nope, those are mine. No dirty deed. No exactly as planned. Look, that's what it says in my deputy handbook. Even the best crook leaves you a clue. Big day, first case. Girls gone, no trace. You go. You know what to do. You go. There you are. I asked you not to get ahead of me. Now, this being your first missing persons case, I advise you keep your eyes open and your mouth closed. <laughs> Shall we practice? No, I think I got it. See, that was a test. You just failed. No! Oh, Betsy Foster, got your message about leaving came as fast as we could. Fast as molasses. Mother, please. Joe, I'm so worried. We all are. Hugo. That annoying noise is Hugo trying to be my deputy. I feel safer already. <laughs> Hello, Hugo. Hello, Mrs. Foster. You look lovely, despite everything. First day on the job. Joe, when he's been gone since this morning, we, we found the gate wide open. Huh, suspicious. Maybe she ran away. Hugo, when I want an opinion, I'll ask for one. <laughs> Maybe she ran away. Well, if she did, it's it's all my fault. I wouldn't let her go to the fair. The fair? Well, I don't mean to alarm you now, but those people can bag Trixie? Who? Trixie, meaning not to be trusted. Hugo, we'll have a good look around. Find her, Joe. I can't bear the thought of losing anyone else. Don't worry, Betsy. I got my best man on the case. Hey. If you hear that melody coming from our wood, follow that tune. Thanks for the tip, dear. Sounds to crack the case. House call adjourned. Leave no stone unturned. Flip here, flip there. These flipping things are everywhere. Don't give up now, sir. Granny and them. That's what it says in my deputy handbook. No, that's not it. No, that's my lunch. Where could it be? Young girl, my book. You go. Get it, Bill. Let's get on with it. Will you make deputy? This time. Here, Pa, it finally happened. Please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me! A child? That's exactly what I said. Winnie, nobody's gonna hurt you. I can't believe you tricked me! I trusted you! We climbed a tree! Does she. <laughs> does she, you know. No, about the water! Only that it's special, but she didn't drink any, so everything is fine. This is Winnie Foster. Winnie, this is my father, Angus. Usually he's in clothes. Not true. A uh, Foster? <laughs> from Tree Gap? Your great grandfather and I used to fish together. It's a pleasure to meet you. Don't you want to shake my hand? No, I want to bite it! That's what my father told me to do if anybody ever tried to kidnap me. Oh no, Winnie, this isn't kidnapping. Well, technically, honey. If you just let us explain. That is a bad idea. As I've always said, if anybody finds out about us. This is different, Miles. This is a child. A child changes everything. Winnie Foster, I give you my word that we are not going to harm you. Please don't bite me. Fine. Hey, please just go home. Her mother must be pretty sick. This is ridiculous. So now what? Pa will know what to do, right, Pa? Of course I know what to do. Where are my boots? Where are my pants? Where are you going? Fishing. Fishing? Why? We have a guest. We need a meal. So much for Pa knowing what to do. Miles, I'm warning you. Boys, let him go. I'm just happy to see him excited about something again. All that man's done for the last 10 years is lie on the couch waiting for you to come home. Welcome back, boys. 
I miss the sound of you fighting. about the water. Oh, Ma, let's just not. Miles, please. Pa doesn't know what to do. That means it's up to us. Winnie, are you ready to hear the biggest secret ever? The question is, is she ready to keep it? How do we know she won't run and tell everyone? She knows too much now not to tell her everything. I guess we'll just have to trust her. Go ahead, Ma. Upon a time, can I start like that? Shouldn't start like that. Be patient with me, Winnie. I've never told this before. Once there was a man, a man with a wife and family. That's Miles and me. Jesse, let me tell the story. I don't want to start a war. We tore from the west to settle in the east, looking for a farm or some land at least. Get to the part where I fall from the tree. No, you got it all wrong. Miles, Jesse. Then we found a wood. Yes, we found a wood. Can you guess which wood? Mine? Good, good. Where we found ourselves a clearing <laughs> and camped for the night. Just the four of us. Plus the cat and the horse. They play a crucial part. Yes, Miles, of course. We slept by a spring near an old ash tree. And that's where I carved the tea. Jessie. In the morning, in the morning, we had no way of knowing. Without even thinking, we drank from the spring. Remember that you can lead a horse to water. I think she knows the phrase. So days went by, the months and years, ordinary life. So it appears the old horse died at twenty-five. But the cat was still alive. We weren't changing, we weren't changing, we weren't changing. We, were changing. we, were we had no way of knowing. Nobody was thinking it's because of the spring. Shut up, Jesse! Still, we didn't know. Yes, we didn't know the How could we not know? No. Where we sit on the delicate balance. The great is the blessing and the curse. In the universe, the, universe, the girl, the cat, and the horse, the tea on the tree, the drink that changed us eternally. That's our secret. Keep it locked up tight. I still don't understand. Enough. All right. We're not aging, we're not growing, and none of us know why. Once upon a time, we drank from your spring, and now we'll never die. And that's the story of the tux, the end. The spring made us immortal. OK. I have a lot of questions. Starting with, where is this cat? He's the ultimate stray. Every kitten for 50 miles has his little white paws. <laughs> How can I be sure you're not just telling me a story? Oh, that part's easy. Ma, where's my rifle? When he can shoot me. Nobody is shooting anybody, Jesse. I mean it. I just cleaned. <laughs> I think that's enough for one night. 
Her mother must be frantic. I'd be willing to take her back home right now. At this hour, the poor girl must be exhausted. And she thinks we're fun. Can I stay? Please? I don't know. I don't think it's right to keep her overnight. We'll take you back first thing in the morning. You have my word. What we need, Pa, is her word. We need you swear you won't breathe a thing about us to anyone, ever. She can sleep on it. Now, let's get you out of that scratchy dress. You can tell my dress was scratchy? Mothers can always tell. Let's find you something in the attic. Look, I hate to be the voice of reason, but if the wrong person finds out about the water, they could play God with it. Or worse. Stop, she's just a kid. Don't make any good thing seem like it's the end of the world. Easy to say when you've never looked out for anyone but yourself. That's what you think of me? Who says I think of you? I shouldn't have implied that you're always selfish. You were an amazing uncle. Sometimes I think about that. Not natural how much that boy is lost. He's not the only one. I used to have a brother. You'll always have a brother. Now come on, while we got a minute, tell me everything from the day you left. You sure, Pa? Gambling, bar fights. Jesse, I don't get out much. <laughs> don't skip a thing. <laughs>
<laughs> That's the price you paid, getting what you wanted. Once we'll step outside your door, and why do we come at it more? Not quite what I have bargained for. And yet I take a little more. Oh. Ah! Jesse! I'm like you, some of us can actually be scared to death. Sorry. <laughs> it's just, I couldn't sleep, so I was thinking of going on a secret adventure. Anyways, good night. Wait! Wait! <laughs> what kind of secret adventure? Any kind you want. The first rule of sneaking out is do anything your parents would say no to. That would be the fair. Jesse, can we go to the fair? Excellent choice. So what's the plan? You climb out the window. I'll meet you downstairs. Why aren't you coming with me? Because the second rule of sneaking out is we have to wear disguises. Good point. Wait, Winnie, the third rule is don't get caught!
Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Tuck? Call me Angus. Okay. Um, Mr. Angus, you do know that in order to catch a fish, you do need water, right? Good tip. Now I'm out here working on my technique. What's your alibi? My alibi? That's Latin for, why are you sneaking out of my house? <laughs> oh, I was just getting some fresh air. I bet you were. One, two, come on, let's go forward. This must be your fresh air. <laughs> well, I know what this looks like, but, but, but. This ought to be good. Jesse's taking me to the fair. Oh, he is, is he? He's Pa, she's our guest. The least I can do is show her a good time. Your mother wouldn't like this. Don't think about that right now. <laughs> just, just think about funnel cakes and carnival games. <laughs> well, now I want to go. My father used to love the fair too. What do you mean he used to? Oh, Winnie, go, both of you. You mean it? I mean it. Have some fun, for old time's sake. As long as you keep an extra low profile. Yes! Now get out of here before you know who catches me catching you. And I get in trouble. Thank you, Mr. Angus! <laughs> Bring me back a funnel cake. <laughs> Oh, man. 
last chance to play fool the guesser. I guess your age wrong, you get a prize. Oh my gosh, Jesse, it's that woman. You do not want to play this game, trust me. You're not going home without a prize. Watch this. Well, if no one's brave enough. I bet you can't guess my age. Jesse, wait. Relax, Winnie, joke's on her. Jesse, no. Well, what do you know? It's a little spitfire from this morning. Let's see if your friend's age is as easy to guess as yours was. Examine the height, consider the shoe size, but the answer is always in the eyes. Yes to read, the answer is always in the... Well? 17, am I right? That's it! You got it on the first try! Wait! Wait a minute. How old are you really? I'm 17, just like you guessed. Of course. I'm never wrong. And I always quit when I'm on top. That's all, folks. Thanks for coming. Good night. Yes. Good night. Hey there, 17. You're not going to let a little friend go home without a prize now, are you? How about this prize, girly? You like it? Yes. Thank you. And how about this prize, old man? You like it? Run, Winnie, go. I just have a few questions, that's all. You don't scare me. Oh, really? Because it sure looks scared. Ha! You! It's, it's actually you! What's going on here? Um, nothing. Just a little bit of understanding. Where are you going, Hugo? Ask me already. Forget the rap. We gotta find Winnie. Come on! I'm already ahead of you, Hugo. Wait up! <laughs> Maybe 102, but I can still outrun anyone. I'm so sorry. I tried to warn you. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's refreshing to have somebody looking out for me who isn't law. But, Jesse, that woman at the fair, she knows about you. I know she knows. Guess the family reunion's over early. Wouldn't be the first time. But you just got here, and you're the first friend I've made in forever. Believe me, I know. So, is this goodbye then? Maybe not. Listen, Ma and Pa and Miles, they don't know how to enjoy anything anymore. They're stuck in the past. But you, you thought it was amazing to climb a tree. Imagine seeing the Eiffel Tower, the Egyptian pyramids. The world. Exactly. But, Jesse, you're not even allowed in the woods. You could never go on those kinds of adventures. Don't worry. I think I've got that figured out. A few years from now, you will turn 17. Turn 17, the same age as me. A few years from now, go to the spring. Go to the spring. And drink. I'll wait for some of the water and you can take it back and keep it safe. You make the world sound so exciting! I just want to drink the water right now! No! You have to wait. Why? What's the difference? <laughs> Trust me, there's a difference. <laughs> Winnie, wait with me and we could be married. Winnie, wait with me and we'll share Stop time and live like this.